This is going to be a tutorial of how to use the audiovisual equipment here in our classroom. I'm going to start out with this device here, which is the gray remote controller. The gray remote controller is operated first and foremost by a green button which says standby and on. When I press it, when I press that green button, the projector over here is going to come on. So I'm pressing it now. It doesn't come on immediately, however, so I have to wait. If I'm too impatient and press it twice, it will mess up everything because the, the bulb in the projector takes a long time to warm up and a long time to cool down. So I'm waiting for it to come on. I can tell it's coming on because I can hear the fan. If, if our videographer will come up closer, she will be able to hear the sound of the fan. Okay. Now, when it comes on, it will project, project something. In this particular case, it's projecting what's on the screen of the laptop computer, but it can project other things as well. The way that I determine what it's going to project is by using the button that says RGB, which means red, green, blue. When I press the RGB button, I should point it more or less toward the projector because it has an infrared receiver here. I'm going to press RGB once. I look over here at the screen and voila, it has changed. It's no longer showing the contents of the laptop, but it's showing what is underneath this, which is our Elmo, which is a document camera. Now, if I put the remote underneath here and look up at the screen, I will note that projected on the screen is an image of the remote. If I want to zoom in on the remote, then I will take this barrel-shaped knob on the, on the left side of the document camera and where it says zoom in this direction, I will turn it that way, zoom in in that direction, which makes the image of the remote much larger so that you can see the standby and on button. You can also see the RGB button. Generally, those are the only buttons I'm going to be using with this. However, there are other cases in which I'll be using something else. Now, if I want to zoom back out, I'll take the barrel button here where it says zoom out, turn it counterclockwise as I'm facing it, so that the projected image becomes like so. This can be very valuable if I'm going to show a picture of a human being or a, a scene of some sort where I want to introduce my audience to that kind of picture. When I'm finished with this, I can use my remote and either press the blank button here, which will make the projector simply produce a blank blue screen, or I, if I'm really done, I could press the on-off button and turn everything off, but I'm not going to do that. So when I'm ready to show something else again, I will press the blank button. At the moment, it's projecting from the document camera and showing this white thing. But if I want to go back to the what's on the computer screen, I'm going to press the RGB button again. Once. Once is not enough because it says no output is detected on DVI. If I press it a second time, it says detecting RGB1, which is the contents of the computer screen. Now let's say that I'm interested in showing people something, a YouTube video. The way to do that is, I go to the computer screen, I go to the YouTube site the way I normally would. Let me take this one here. I have my YouTube choices here. They are still being projected up on the screen. So anything I do on the computer is going to be projected onto the screen. So if I want to hear Max Bruch's Concerto for Two Pianos, the third movement, I just click on that the way I would if this were any old YouTube video and gradually it's going to be playing the music. Now the, the sound is coming from the two loudspeakers over here. So if I'm going to play something that has sound, I better make sure that, it's, that both of the speakers are turned on, otherwise the sound will be much too weak. So if I walk in here and start playing something like this without having checked the speakers, I will be disappointed. My audience will also be restive. So there we have the 
contents of this YouTube video being played. There's no movement there, but if there were, we would be able to see that. And I'm going to stop it the way I would any old YouTube video. Let's say, as an alternative, that I want to show a PowerPoint presentation. If I want to do that, I'm going to do on the computer what I would normally do. I'll get out of the YouTube. I will get out of this thing. I will get out of this thing. I will get out of this thing, all of which, by the way, are being projected back there. I will even get out of this thing and out of this thing. Then somewhere I would look for a YouTube. Pardon me, for a PowerPoint presentation. Let's say I want to do this one. But this is already here. If I have my own PowerPoint presentation that is not already on the computer, which is very likely if I'm a student, then I'm going to take my thumb drive with my PowerPoint presentation on it, like so. We're all our familiar thumb drives. I'm not going to plug it into the computer because the USB ports there are all taken up, but instead I'm going to put it in this hub. Now this hub has two empty, empty slots. The reason there is this finger with a slash through it is that these two things that are in one side of the hub need to stay there, whereas the two empty sides of the hub can be used. So I would go ahead and plug in my thumb drive. It would appear on, on the computer as usual. I'm not going to show that now. But then I would be able to open up the PowerPoint presentation and project it as I've done here. Now, I'm going to take this back out. What you've seen thus are ways to turn the projector on and off. You've seen ways to go from what is projected from the projector, either the computer or the contents of the document camera. And you've seen how to use the computer itself to do a PowerPoint presentation, a YouTube presentation, or of course you could also just as easily look at a Microsoft Word document or anything else that's on the computer. You've also seen that you can use this handy blank button to blank out the screen so that, for instance, if you come in and you have a PowerPoint presentation that you want to introduce to your audience after two minutes of your speech rather than at the beginning, you can go ahead and have it set up on the computer, blank it out so that there's nothing to distract your audience. And when you're ready, use the remote, press the blank button, and poof, it's there for your audience to see. The only other things that you might be interested in with respect to the remote are that there is a laser pointer on here in the middle. So if I want to point something out over here, I can use the laser pointer. There is also a little area where it says magnify. I generally don't use that because when I'm using the the document projector, I can magnify by zooming in or out. But if I use this, you'll notice here that the whole content of the, of the projection, projected area increases and so forth. So that's something else you might conceivably use but are unlikely to. Be very careful when you're using the remote not to hit the green button unless you really mean to. If you press it once, You'll notice on the screen here that it asks you if you want the power off. Do not freak out and press the button again because unless you really want to turn the machine off because it will go off and then it will take quite a long time to come back on again. If you really do want it to be turned off, then you press the green button twice, once, twice, and everything will go off. You'll notice, however, that the fan in the projector is still whirring because it will take maybe 30 seconds or more for the bulb to cool, cool down enough that you can turn it back on. So be very cautious about pressing the green button off unless you really mean to turn it off. Otherwise you will have, a, will have to wait during the middle of your speech to turn it back on. These are the basics of the AV material. There is one other item. This is a fancy schmancy remote for PowerPoint presentations. On the side of it, it has a button that is a power button. You hold it down until the circular area here turns green. Then when you have a PowerPoint presentation up there, you can press the right arrow to go forward, the left arrow to go back. This also has a laser pointer, which is activated by pressing the black button in the middle, like so. So 
this you may if you just want a laser pointer and don't want to use the grave the gray remote you can use this one but the basic purpose of this however is to use for PowerPoint presentations be sure you remember to turn it off by holding the power button down so that the green light goes off now you are experts now you can get your certificates for having learned how to use the electronic gear in the classroom